And this bicycle needs a chain, a new chain will be installed. In this video, I'll show you what's involved. The tools are right here. This chain breaker will be used and it's gonna be held in place with the crescent wrench and the slip joint pliers. This chain is going to be installed, which is gonna be a riveted installation. Here is the rivet pin that chain came with. The chain itself is a Shimano 105 level chain, but it's compatible with the Altegra group set. And this has the following product numbers on it. It came with instruction in no pictures, English, French, Dutch, and Turkish. And this was picked for Shimano North America that it's necessary to be included in the package. No other pictures given, so I'll walk you through what's important here. When the chain is being installed and fitted to the bike, it's going to be shortened. On a previous bicycle, the chain got shortened by this much. And we ended up with one pin that gets removed from the chain and half of the pin that's used for installation. You can see it's going to snap off there at the end and this part of the pin will remain in the chain so this is the throwaway as well as this so to set the chain to its length the rear derailleur needs to be lined up for the smallest sprocket on the cassette set and the front derailleur needs to line up with the largest or larger chain ring at the front from here on it's somewhat straightforward open the package don't touch the ground much with the chain as much as possible chain is picking the dirt up like there's no tomorrow so what i do is something like this straighten it uncoil it next to the bicycle and put it in place somewhere here well, right around the large chain ring right around the in this case 11 to sprocket there and try not to drag it on the ground at all wrap it around like so goes around on the outside of the guide pulley underneath this metal tab and from the wraps the tension pulley from the outside again to where that's lined up there pretty well and it's obvious the chain is long enough it can be connected it can be shortened exactly where it needs to be so let me show you this wrap around here at the rear the railier this is the tab the chain obviously is behind it and doesn't wrap it from the outside so from this side on that pulley from this side on that pulley now what is the correct length of the chain the correct length of the chain is Oh yeah, and one other thing, I will get back to the correct length. The chain needs to be mounted in a way that the letters are showing on the outside. That has a picture on the packaging here. This is what's meant by this image. So on one side, there are no letters, that's a no. On the other side, there are letters, that's a yes. So could have put a check mark there, why not? But that's the intent with this. How long should the chain be and how many links should I take out a very simple in this position I'm gonna have to pull on the rear derailleur until the two little axles for the tension pulley and the guide pulley are vertical and they're gonna be somewhat in front of the axle so they will be vertical somewhere there that's looking good it could be one link closer 
yeah a little bit half a link i don't know that's a little too much Let's see how about no that's too much how about there that looks like a position that's also shown in shimano's manual so now i'm looking at my hand here see how many links i have in my hand i'm gonna have to separate which pin so if i take out this one here yeah, it's not gonna work too well that looks like a little slack so i'm gonna take out maybe i'm gonna have to take out of this one here okay so the chain removal tool gets used as follows put the chain in and crank on the small handle now this one doesn't have a very nice leverage that's why and the amount of force that's needed is substantial so that's why it needs extra grip being held like so that's why they have a hexagonal body to begin with the manufacturer knows this and this side gets spun pliers until that pin is until the pin is pushed out of the chain completely. So this pin in the tool needs to be aligned with the pin in the chain that it's pushing out, just like so. Of course, it needs a good grip with a crescent wrench or this adjustable wrench, and it needs a good grip with a slip joint pliers to get the pin going, and might need a few minutes and a bit of patience to get this started I just rotate a little and let it relax a little bit because I really don't want to break the pin in the chain removal tool so that's why I don't go at it aggressively just slowly like so give it a little bit so you can see it's coming out just to give it a little few seconds whatever to relax the material the pin being pushed out it's um, it's almost almost there it's coming out and when it does come out it's gonna make a snap plug there it sounds and feels like oh my god something broke nope that's how it works from here on the pin is moving forward with a bit more ease it's still an effort to rotate this short handle but you can see the pin backing out it's almost out and when it does come out I'm gonna have to put this wrench back on again and at the other end it's gonna also snap and fly out from the chain typically I don't like components flying everywhere I'm kind of aiming for the wheel and tire okay no snapping no drama it's just like that if this was any easier I tell you but it's not so it is what it is so now so many links have been removed and obviously I removed the number of links sensibly so that the rest of the chain the unfinished open rest of the chain fits with the outer plates match with the inner plates yes if i remove the pin from here it wouldn't make sense because you can't join outer plates to outer plates you can only join outer plates with inner plates just like so this pointed end of this pin is a smaller diameter than this one here this is one that remains in the chain so the smaller diameter part just lines up the plates and the bushings like so everything is in place and now have to use the tool in the reverse order line up the pin in the chain to be riveted with the pin in the tool Try not to twist the chain too much or again break the pin in chain riveting tool 
there that looks like a good alignment and it started pushing the pin through the wrench again and the pliers again so lining it up again so far this is the progress that was made that's how it looks like the, with the forces involved once it's riveted together it's gonna be flush and gonna look good you can't really can't really correct that angle which is I'm uh, not too happy about so I'm gonna push the pin forward hoping that it goes in place exactly where it should there. it went through the outer plate with a snap so now it's easy to spin it and if I backed it off you can see that the tension on the chain disappeared so it's not prying the outer link out anymore relatively easy to crank it in until it gets flush with the outer plate and it needs a little more movement forward about half a millimeter you can see the pin is not fully in and i need to see the thin section of the the joint between the tapered smaller diameter of this pin and the permanent part i need to see a line that separates the two let's see Maybe a quarter turn or so. There. It's, it's in place. I know it's in place because turning it became easy again. Relatively. Yeah, it moves easily as it should. That's nice. Of course, I'm ready for applying a chain lubricant to it, the whole chain. And this is the narrow section there. I just put my nail in it so that's the part that needs to be exposed and to break it off I'm just gonna hold it like so and there it snaps off this is what's left on the outside so this is flush on the outside with just a little bit sticking out as it should flush on the inside with just enough sticking out and catching my nail so and of course it's where is it and it's articulating as it should nice so i'm ready to lubricate so this is how the fitted chain looks like at rest it was a bit of a torture to get this done but uh, it's doable now the chain sizing uh, dictates that it could be more forward a little bit this could have been shortened by one more chain link however i only have 30 teeth on the largest sprocket here and i have wheels with 34 sprockets as well so when the bike is shifted or the chain is shifted to the largest chain ring when the chain on the cassette set is wrapped around the largest sprocket on the cassette set and this is serious cross chaining but this is how chain fitting is done and the chain is wrapped around the larger or largest chain rings at the front there is still enough motion left in the rear derailleur that if i used 34 teeth this is 30 teeth now on the largest sprocket set if i used an even larger 34 teeth for hill climbs i would still have enough uh, extra length in the chain to wrap the larger cassette set and still have enough motion in the rear derailleur to tension the chain properly so if i shortened the chain the rear derailleur would be more forward giving me less space or less wiggle room to wrap around the 34 tooth uh, sprocket in a different cassette set here so that's why I stopped fitting the chain or stopped shortening the chain and 
cut it at the length I did. Yes, the chain could be one more link shorter, but it's gonna work for both the 11 to 30, as well as 11, 32, 11, 34 cassette sets that I use on these hunt wheels. So I'm happy with this chain length and I'm ready to lubricate the chain and take it for a test ride.